How do you fancy learning how to paint a barn owl in watercolour? Well, let me show you some video clips from my main Patreon video on how I painted the barn owl's wing. Let me show you how. Now, one thing I enjoy doing is painting barn owls, one of the kind of most amazing birds that you can see out there. That kind of classic heart-shaped face, really, really nice. So what I'm working on, on this part of the barn owl, is working on obviously the wing feathers. I'm trying to look at how the details go. Actually, when you really look into a barn owl, you can see all the fine details, such as that little arrow shapes. So as you can see, I'm trying to paint these in using my double zero brush at the moment. The idea really is not to have too much paint on the brush because at least that way you don't end up putting um, big blobs of paint in one go down there. So what I tend to do is kind of dab it once or twice onto a piece of tissue. I'm also keeping a constant check on the direction that the brush strokes go in and how they all form, how they kind of layer together. So we're adding this darker colour now, I want to try and think about the shape. I've already started thinking that way around because of the initial wash, the foundation wash, which I've put on the barn owl's wings, you can see they kind of vary in tone a little bit. But now I want to kind of increase those tones and I'm going to do that by adding on the finer details. Now this is all my little kind of homemade um, brushes which I call the replicator brush. I know a little bit different. Um, but this is just an old brush which I've got a pair of pliers and kind of crimped that metal ferrule. So only do this if it's a brush you're going to throw in the bin. Believe me you don't want to do it to your best of uh, watercolour brushes. The beauty of it really is that it can give me two or three prongs in one go. Now you can see I'm working on the finer details, working on the really, really kind of individual uh, kind of dots within the wing. It's amazing how much there are, but you still got to concentrate when you're working on this. You still got to be careful how much detail you put into that wing because they even vary in shape, in size, in the direction that these are applied. I tend to use a very large reference photo because at least with a large photo you can pinch in uh, using a tablet or a mobile phone or a computer screen, whichever you prefer, to be able to look at those finer details. I'm also considering the consistency of the paint as well. So how thick is that paint? Will it be watery, milky, creamy or thick? So which one will it be? So in this case it's going to be really creamy because I want to make sure that after I add the same layer of paint again, I have to go over the same detailed marks. So I'm using a variety of techniques within this as well, which I'll show you from my main Patreon lessons. Bearing in mind this is just a cut down version from my Patreon tutorial. Now don't forget the complete video tutorial for how to paint this lovely barn owl is on my Patreon page and that's all the way through so you've got quite a few hours worth of kind of online tuition just to be able to paint this lovely barn owl. I'll show you all the details within the eyes, I'm trying to get that kind of feeling of life and sparkle in there. But also looking at the kind of depth and the layers within the feathers to create a much more realistic feel. So I'm constantly looking at all the fine details within the wings as well. It's amazing how many different shapes there are because the more that you look at that photograph as I just spoke about, the more detail you will see. Believe you me, that's why you do need that large photo. One thing I do like to try and achieve is a feeling of depth and variety within the painting. So now what I want to do is, you ready for this, she's a little bit of watercolour white. Now this is something which I use on a regular basis. I know it's one of those things which some people prefer not to use, or others may use uh, white gouache or gouache, whichever way you pronounce it. Um, but I prefer to use watercolour white. And I tend to look for one which is going to be a more of a creamy consistency and one that's also opaque because there are varieties on the market which are semi-opaque, semi-transparent, transparent. Have a look at the different manufacturers if you want something like this. 
and see which ones that you can find. I would recommend, as I said, the opaque version. So I'm applying this just by using the stippling technique, looking at where all the shapes go. Again, really closely looking at the photograph to make sure that I can see where all these tiny marks go. Because you can't just put them on the painting haphazardly, you really need to kind of fine tune and focus on where these are going to be. But this will give that top layer, as you can see, to the finished painting. And that will give us all those details that we need to create the form and the shape of the barn owl wing. Again, it's amazing how the middle little kind of star marks there are in there when you really look into the into the depths. Remember I put those, those little triangles earlier on. And to highlight those triangles, you've even got white triangles within that as well. So there you go. That will give you some ideas on how I painted the barn owl wing. Now if you fancy having a go at this and working on a complete video tutorial, I'll guide you through step by step, showing you a variety of techniques on how to do that. I'll also give you the outline drawing, the PDF guide and the photograph to work from as well. To find out more, just simply click on the links below. And remember to click on like, subscribe and share. And of course, you can always comment down below as well. Now the question of the day is what is your favourite subject to paint? Let me know, put it in the comments below and I'll talk to you all again very soon.